I felt like I had to craft the book after this sort of thing. Uh, no one thought that anyone would try it after Tupperwine did. Indeed, it took 52 years. And actually, someone tried this again in 1986. Uh, and did pretty well, but the conditions were entirely different from the way these guys did it. Um, Ad Tupperwine was, uh, was a stand-up guy. Uh, and you can see some of the uh, things that were written about him, uh, a colorful and charming and thoughtful individual. Um, and the, my favorite quote out of the book, I would rather be a good shot, be able to pass the idea of straight rifle pointing, oops, uh, straight rifle pointing, to the coming generations than be President of the United States. I rock myself to sleep each night thinking of the next day's shooting and trying to figure out how to improve and why I missed those shots today. I mean, he really took this serious. It was really important to him. And he was thrilled that his wife was really just as good a shot as he was. As I said, he was the son of a German immigrant. He was a, uh, his father was a, uh, inventor, a gunsmith, and had three patents. Uh, one of Marlin's, uh, John Marlin's rifles, he was a prototype uh, uh, American gunsmith, American firearm manufacturer, the name carries on today. Uh, firearms first repeating, or Marlin's first repeating firearm was a dud. It was his design. It just never took off. Marlin went to the patent office, fished out three patents, and found one patent from EAF Tupperwine from Bernie, Texas, and incorporated that patent into one of the most successful repeating firearms ever designed and ever marketed. Um, Ad Tupperwine went about his records and went about his shooting through his influence with Doc Carver. And I put the quotations there, you can do better. A lot of people haven't heard of Doc Carver. They've heard of Buffalo Bill, Bill Cody, Buffalo Bill's Wild West. This was along with Buffalo, but these were partners of the first Wild West show. They hardly lasted a summer. Buffalo Bill couldn't stay sober, and Doc Carver couldn't keep his temper. Uh, it was seen by some folks uh, looking backstage, Doc Carver taking out his frustration on the head of a horse. He smacked the horse in the head with the gun of his butt because he wasn't happy with how a show turned out or something. Uh, uh, and he, would you know he was he had a bad temper so when EAF Topperwine heard that his son was going to watch Doc Carver perform in his he spun off from Buffalo Bill and had his own Wild West show when he heard that Adolf his son was going to watch Doc Carver he said you can do better but Adolf worked through all that style and all that bravado and saw that Doc Carver was legitimate in the shooting uh, he had to be legitimate in shooting because he did these incredible endurance, endurance events in the 1880s and 1890s uh, as a, but, a betting uh, event. He wanted to cash bets, and if he didn't do it legitimately, he wasn't going to be able to cash bets. So he had all sorts of judges. He had it all marked off, and when he got done with his career and Ad Tupperwine ran into him as a young budding shooter, uh, Mr. Carver said, if you want to do things legitimately, follow these rules. So he gave him a set of handwritten rules that Ad Tupperwine kept with him for the rest of his life. So he was very particular about his shooting. When he did, his, uh, uh, when he did any of his shoots, it was all marked off 20 feet, 25 feet. Everything was thrown into the air. They didn't use the hand-sprung traps, which were just becoming uh, uh, manufactured in those days. Uh, it was all hand thrown. It had to be thrown to a certain height. If it wasn't thrown to a certain height, Ad, Ad Topperwine would, would pass. So he was very much a stickler about the rules. This was an unsanctioned event, but he still believed that there were rules that should govern the thing. Then came along Tom Fry. Several years later, in the 19, after World War II, uh, when servicemen were coming over, sports shooting saw an even greater boom with servicemen who wanted, who fell in love uh, with the gun and, and being able to shoot it accurately, uh, would go and see these guys tour. And Tom Fry toured for Remington, got his start in Ohio. Uh, as you can tell, I refer to him as a strapping and handsome young man. He, he very much was. Um, uh, uh, he 
However, as lucky in love as Ad Tupperwine was with Plinky, uh, Tom Fry just had a hard time keeping relationships going, and, and a lot of it wasn't his fault. And uh, the fourth principle, I guess this, you've got Ad Tupperwine and Tom Fry in this focus on this endurance shooting event. I go through a lot of their careers. Uh, and obviously, Plinky, a great shooter in her own right, and just really was a great part of the Ad Tupperwine story. This man, on, you know who the man on the right is. That's Duke, John Wayne. Newt Crumley was a casino owner, started in Elko, was a pioneering casino owner. Uh, the first casino owner to bring in entertainment to his casino. Uh, and paid all sorts of money for these entertainers to come in. Uh, Tennessee, Ernie uh, Williams, uh, um, uh, Harpo Marx, all sorts of Red Fox when he was getting started, uh, Ted Lewis, Paul Whiteman, the king of jazz. Uh, they would come to out of the way Elko. Uh, and Newt Crumley would get him there and it would pay him incredible amounts of money to bring him in. And his bookkeeper, I'd always remember, I had fun with this and I put it in the book, that a lot of times the entertainers would end up owing him because they they gambled too much and lost. So Vegas followed his actions, Newt Crumley's actions. He was a pioneer also in the sponsorship of sporting events, corporate sponsorship of sporting events, and he wanted his casino in Reno to sponsor interesting sporting events. And he went to Tom Fry and said, I remember the Tupperwine record. I've gone to your shows. You never miss. Why don't you try it? <laughs> Like going and shooting at 72,500 targets is easy. So uh, tragically, uh, Newt Crumley was an incredible, had an incredible sense of adventure. There was always something going on, even on his family vacations to Bermuda. He would get caught in a storm, and the yacht would get washed up ashore with the family in it, you know, and they would be rescued by the Coast Guard. Um, he was a private uh, pilot, and. Uh, once went on a humanitarian mission to uh, help a family travel from a couple of remote spots in Nevada to go to a family member's funeral and would brave bad weather. In fact, uh, there were two planes once that were carrying, that were shuttling family members to and from a funeral, and one of those planes went down. And uh, Newt's plane went on. But uh, in the early 60s, Newt's plane, he was flying back uh, with the businessmen from Reno, from Palm Springs, and they uh, were caught in an ice, uh, an icing incident uh, not far from uh, Tonopah. And his plane, iced, the wings iced over, and the plane went down, and he was lost. Uh, so these are the principles that are, that are involved in it. Uh, how big a deal was this? Well, who's that guy in the middle? This is 1958-59. This is at the Sh Clint Eastwood. Yeah, go ahead and make my day. So, and this just kind of shows you the drawing power that Newt Crumley had. Now, Clint Eastwood was not the big star. He was just starting out with his career with Rawhide at about that time. Uh, so he got uh, Mr. Eastwood to show up, and there were other uh, lots of fun things that Newt Crumley could do to bring a crowd out to the middle of nowhere uh, and watch some guy shoot at 100,000 wooden blocks. Um, now. Ad Tupperwine complained. Like I said, he was a stickler for the rules. When he first heard that his record had been broken, 1959, no Twitter, no Facebook, no YouTube, no uh, uh, Fox News or CNN, news moved awfully slowly. So a few weeks after this, he heard about the shooting event, and he went and, and wrote a letter to Tom Fry on, on his own manual typewriter and congratulated him but kind of wondered about the conditions that, were, that was done in. Uh, about a month later, he was shown some still photos that showed that Tom Fry was shooting from much closer range. Um, and Ad Tupperwine wrote a letter accusing Tom Fry of cheating. Uh, I compare this nowadays to what baseball went through. Tom Fry took some muscle relaxers to get through this shoot. Um, Performance enhancing substance, it's not, it's not uh, steroids, but you could certainly make the argument that, you know, Ad Tupperwine did not have muscle relaxers in 1907. He had a salt bath. Um, so um, uh, there were the, the complaints. Uh, also, the big one, 
as baseball saw when its home run record was breaking substance abuse, also the, the ballparks were a lot smaller. Uh, to, you know, uh, the long ball, what do they say about the long ball? You know, that, that's what people want to come out and see. Uh, so the parks, were, these new parks that were being built were a lot of them, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them were smaller and easier to hit a home run out of. Uh, so that distance requirement that Tom Fry was not meeting in Ad Tupperwine's eyes, seeing this still photo that the targets were being thrown a lot closer to him, that's why he complained. But a lot of people said, you, you know, Fry had to know what the, what the rules were. Well, the only, this was an unsanctioned event. The only rules that were out there were from Doc Carver sitting in a 90-year-old man's desk drawer, you know, and so there were no rules to govern this sort of thing. You know, but still, they should have known. No, one of the biggest things that happened around that time in that era uh, was the 100-point game in 1962, three years after the 1959 Tom Fry shoot. Uh, Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points for the Philadelphia Warriors. Um, that game was played out of the way in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Not everybody's going to know about it. Uh, an arena of 8,500 capacity was half-filled. Not everybody's going to know about it. Uh, the game was against the Knicks, yet no one from the New York press was there to cover the game. That sounds like today, <laughs> the way the Knicks are. Uh, so anyway, you see this. A lot of these important events that go down sometimes were just missed. There was no footage of that. We have no footage uh, that we know of, of, of Wilt Chamberlain scoring 100 points. You ever seen a box score in today's uh, basketball games? Offensive rebounds, technicals, three-point shots, minutes.